Hello everybody, uh, my name is Amir Sarabadani. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the major changes that has been happening on our Medivikis RDMS library in the past couple of years. Uh, so let's get into that introduction and basic uh, what it is, what I'm going to talk about. First of all, who I am. Uh, my, I'm Amir Sarabadani. I work at Wikimedia Foundation in data persistence team as a SAF database architect, which part of my job is to look at long-term improvements into data which is in uh, MediaWiki and Wikimedia. Um, also, I've been working in volunteer capacity or non-volunteer capacity on improving data resources, handling of data resources in MediaWiki for a while now, since like for five, six years. Um, so let's talk about what is RDBMS library. Uh, RDBMS library is a component of MediaWiki, part of MediaWiki uh, that is uh, isolated in a set of uh, directories called includes libs RDBMS. Um, and it's gateway between all of MediaWiki and all of databases. Uh, if you want to make a query, it goes through this system. And uh, because of that, import our production, Wikimedia production, uh, calls the databases happen around uh, 300,000 to 500,000 times a second. So any major, any minor change, any, any minor problem in it, it actually causes drastic uh, issues in our production. Um, so, uh, like, I'm sorry, I have this uh, slide that is wall of text. I'm, I'm, I promise this, th there are not that many. Um, but there are lots of issues with the RDMS library. Uh, it does everything. It's DBIL, the abstract, database abstraction layer. It does load balancing, circuit breaking, uh, transaction management, anything you can uh, imagine. And they are all coupled together, um, and they're not really easily in, uh, disentangled. Um, also, it has 20 years of tech depth in it. It has a lot of assumptions, a lot of things that were true like 10 years ago, but not anymore. Um, and on top of that, it has a quite a wide API. It allows users to basically developers to do whatever they want with the RDMS library and data resources, which makes it not a really good uh, place to call uh, use in so many cases and has, can cause outages many times. Uh, for example, it accepts raw SQL, which is a um, security, not, it's not a good security practice, and also uh, accepts raw SQL in conditions. Uh, so we have been trying to get rid of those. Um, um, it's not only problems it has, uh, like one of the other problems that it has, it has lots of counter YouTube APIs. Uh, that is, for example, the method that you call for a update has something that several times has caused data, uh, data corruption because people accidentally sent the wrong argument on the condition of where instead of set and the other way around. Um, it's really over-engineered. It has a lot of things that it doesn't need. Uh, and uh, it's really hard to understand. Many people are, are afraid to touch it because it's not really easy to understand. Um, and given this combination of being used a lot and at the same time being really hard to understand and very complex, makes it any sort of change to be uh, as, a, as a high risk and has the potential to cause a major outage and major problems. Um, and it has been the source of many outages since I remember uh, working on MediaWiki. Um, so we have been trying to improve this. Uh, some work got started on this in uh, 2021. Um, small things, but then uh, this year, in the fiscal year of 2023 and 2024, uh, the Community Foundation uh, made it official as part of their uh, annual plan because uh, there is a several several buckets and one of these buckets is wiki experiences to uh, ease contributing to media wiki uh, and uh, generally make it better as part of knowledge knowledge platform so we wanted to improve this but we were thinking when we worked to Im improve this uh, library um, what we've been trying to do is first of all define api uh, it's API to the outside of this library and internally when its components uh, are talking to each other. Um, and try to make those APIs uh, uh, deep. Uh, this is from a philosophy of software design. It's a pretty good book and it explains how you should design uh, a software component in a software. Uh, and it always says you should have a narrow interface, narrow uh, API, uh, but do a lot inside that API. And I've been trying to get this uh, done. 
And the other part is that uh, we have been trying to get rid of lots of stuff that have been over-engineered, and because of that, they were not used or barely used. Um, and uh, I go through some of them. Uh, but also, one of the things I've been trying to do in my design of the APIs, I was focusing on the most common use case and made the design around that. Uh, I wasn't trying to actually design for the edge cases. The edge cases need to be supported, but they don't need to be the forefront of the design of the uh, API. So uh, I'm going through some of these changes that are happening. Uh, the first one, and a very rather simple one, is when you want to get a database object and a database connection. Um, so have, how many of you uh, have seen this before, like this type of code that you have been doing to do a database select? Can I have a show of hands? Um, oh, nice. OK. Uh, so this is, first of all, this is a really, really old way. I call this Uber deprecated because the, its replacement is also deprecated. Um, so back then, uh, we used to have uh, WF get DB, DB replica, and DB primary. And then you, could, uh, you would call select on those. But to get the data with object, you would, get, you would call wf-get-db, which is a global function. And it has a lot of issues. Uh, um, so this is the replacement, uh, but it's also deprecated now, uh, which in that, you, you get the services. And the, from the services container, you call the database load balancer factory. And then from the load balancer factory, you get the main load balancer if you want to get access to the main data. And you give it a domain ID, and that, uh, with that, you get a load balancer. And then uh, from the load balancer, you called get connection with the DB replica. And as you can see, it's not really uh, content intuitive. Uh, and it's also like it has many layers of chains of like you need to call this and you call that. Um, so the other one is like load balancer, this server class has many, many different ways to get the database connection. I just listed some of those. We removed, uh, I think, three or four of them so far. But, uh, and the funny part is that each one of those do something slightly differently. So it's really confusing and the people have been using it in a wrong way all the time. Um, wait, wait, okay. Um, so we, just, we, did, we went through everything and we basically revamped the whole thing. Um, we introduced an interface called iConnection Provider. iConnection Provider has only four, in, uh, four methods. Um, I have, I've been explaining two of them, get primary database and get replica database. Uh, you don't need to use the constant anymore. Um, and when you want to inject it, uh, you can just inject the load balancer factory. So if you use a load balancer and you inject load balancer, you don't need to change anything. You just need to change to this uh, uh, sub class of that interface. Um, and then when you want to get a product, uh, primary database, you just call get primary database. Uh, one difference here is that uh, actually it's not very visible there, but get replica database returns a narrower interface called iReadable database, which is uh, iDatabase extends iReadable database. But the difference is that iReadable database um, doesn't have write methods in it. So you cannot call an insert on a replica. Um, so it makes sure like, you don't accidentally start writing to a replica. Um, so uh, first of all, it, they, what the improvements have been happening with this is that it has a much simpler injection. It uh, reduces the coupling between uh, classes and your usages. It makes it less confusing. If you want to get a database connection, you get only four methods. Uh, you couple to only four public methods instead of coupling to, I think, around 40 or 70 methods, uh, depending on the which uh, service you, uh, you try to inject. Um, and those narrower interfaces um, are rather simpler to understand and makes people to onboard on those uh, media wiki. Uh, the other thing that is being changing uh, is something called virtual domains. Um, I will get to how, what does it even mean right now. So first of all, uh, there's some extensions need to have a database or a table that is in an external cluster. Uh, it's in a shared database, shared table. Um, the way that they do it is that they introduce two uh, global uh, configurations. Of one is the cluster, one is the shared DB name. And then they call the LB factory. Then they call use that uh, cluster to figure out if they need to connect to the external LB or the main LB. Um, and if it's there and you get the LB, and then through that, uh, the domain, they actually figure out which uh, database they should connect to. Um, and it has many issues for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it's really confusing. I, honestly, I cannot even think of it myself when I'm talking about it. 
Um, so the way that it's been happening in now, it's basically split to three things. In extension.json, you introduce a new virtual domain, like a database, basically. Um, and then in the, your code, you just do the exact same thing that you have been doing in calling the database, getting a database connection. You don't change anything. You just call this virtual domain instead. And in a production configuration, you just need to make the mapping in one central uh, configuration variable that is, it belongs to core, and it's called WG virtual domain mapping. And then you map that virtual domain to whatever cluster or database that you need. Uh, and th through that, like when we were running this in every extension that we applied this and uh, adopted this, we dropped uh, like hundreds of lines of code at least. So it's uh, the improvements that it has, it's extremely simplified. It doesn't need to add uh, two more config variables in every extension that does this. Like many extensions do this. Echo does this, uh, but passwords in core does this. Uh, uh, URL Schrodinger does this. Uh, the example I gave there was bounce handler and so many more. Uh, so they are just will be in one configuration variable. Um, and also uh, out of the box support of database updater and installer because when you do that, you cannot actually have the extensions, um, database updater and supporter, uh, uh, installer and updater, and you have to basically invent the wheel there. With this, you don't need even to do that. You just add these uh, changes and then it automatically finds the right database and applies the updates. Um, another change that has been happening for a while now is query builders. Uh, so, Basically, very simply, when you call, instead of calling dbr select and then r calling this thing that I, I'm, ha I'm having a hard time to even, even read this, uh, you call a fluent interface. So you get a query builder, and that query builder, you can call uh, select on it, and then from join, and it uh, basically tries to mimic the SQL. So you call select, from, select uh, CL2 from category links, join page on page title equals CL2, and it basically tries to mimic the whole SQL that you have been writing there. Um, like one of the, ma there are lots of in uh, improvements there. Uh, it's much more readable. Uh, you don't, uh, also you don't need to make like arrays here and then try to m play with the array inside the conditions. You can just call those functions in conditionally inside the loops or anything like that. Um, and this is uh, industry standard, um, basically anything uh, that we have, uh, like Juke, Juke belong, uh, is Java's uh, database management system, very simply. Um, and Doctrine and so many others use this uh, query builder system, and it's much surf safer. Um, and again, it's much more readable to understand how, what does it querying trying to do. Um, and the next one that we have recently like landed it like two weeks ago is expression builders. Um, so instead of writing raw SQL and uh, making stuff like PR expiry and then calling add quotes and then writing or, uh, because it must also not be valid SQL sometimes, um, you just call dbxpr, which has three fields. Uh, the field, the operations, the value. And it calls all add quotes on that value automatically. You don't need to remember to call that. And then you can chain it. If you call or, then you get an uh, expression group and then expression group you can call or uh, or on it and then like you know write more, even more or on it or uh, if you want to do nesting and do more complicated stuff you can call um, call an or and then or expression and then you call these three again and then you can add more uh, there are lots of examples of that in core um, this also makes a, there are also, it has supports, has supports for like expressions. So instead of uh, basically calling make list, uh, which produces a string that is raw SQL and then passing it around, uh, you call this instead, which uh, returns an object to you. And that object can be moved around to actually uh, have that value and uh, makes, uh, makes things slightly simpler. One improvement and one major improvement about this is that uh, every time you need to write a SQL, uh, if you want to write, write raw SQL, you have to call add codes to escape it. Uh, if you forget, you will open an SQL injection. But by doing this, we automatically run that add codes without you noticing. So without that, um, it doesn't, it reduces the chance of people accidentally opening a SQL injection. And it's much more readable. 
um, instead of uh, like, especially if you get uh, more complex uh, expressions, uh, it gets really dizzying to read those. So this makes it, uh, makes it much simpler. Um, and the last part is some miscellaneous changes that we have been doing. Uh, one is that these are lots of work, but they are because they are internal uh, to the what we have been doing inside our DMS library. It's not really impacting others, so I'm not really going into deep. Uh, about those, but first thing that we did, we split the database class into two. One is called the SQL platform that is responsible for building SQL, um, and that uh, that basically dropped this uh, complexity score of uh, our uh, database class from 1,000 to 600, uh, which basically um, used to be the most complex class of MediaWiki wiki core, but now it's like the fifth. Um, and uh, the other removing regexes from critical code path, one of the things that we did was that if you look at the database code, it actually, when you want to call select on it, uh, it builds a raw SQL and then sends, and then it calls query, database query, the general purpose one. Uh, but database query has a lot of safeguards, a lot of things that it needs to deal with. Uh, for example, it needs to uh, like abort if you're trying to write into a uh, primary, uh, so, sorry, uh, right into a replica. And because of that, it runs a lot of regexes on those raw SQL to actually figure out what this SQL is about. Like, what tables are you touching? Uh, give me a generalized version of the SQL so I can log it. And so many more things. And they're really taxing and they're really, really slow. Like, they were like half a percent of all of our app service CPU were just spent just scrubbing SQL, running regexes on them. Uh, so what we did was that instead of run, passing around raw SQL, we just introduced an object called query, which has this information and then just pass around that object instead. Um, we removed like, I think 30, 40 uh, public and um, uh, more than that uh, methods from the, uh, these RDMS libraries. Um, we removed query multi, which, is, uh, which was adding support for running uh, multiple queries at the same time, but it was not, not used and it was, had a lot of issues. And with that, we just dropped 1,000 lines from uh, our image library. And we merged two uh, MySQL uh, classes to with each other because they were not confusing enough. They wanted to make it even more confusing. Um, so, but what we are going to do now, uh, one of the things that we are planning to actually start adopting these uh, new APIs that we have been building inside core. Uh, the core is mostly done. Uh, uh, for example, just for select query builders, uh, we have migrated around 800 of them. Uh, and there's like 70 left that they are really complex and not easy to fix. But the, one of the reasons that we did uh, was that uh, we wrote a script because like it doing 800 of them is not just really feasible. Uh, so we wrote a script that parses PHP and then tries to refactor it automatically. Um, and uh, we wanted to add support for more types of in SQL expression builder. For example, doing function calls inside expression builder is not possible now, but we are working on that. Um, and uh, one, uh, we want to work on the next quarter on uh, two uh, RDMS internals. Uh, one of them is load monitor, which is a circuit breaker to avoid like outages, and it's not working. So we want to fix that. Uh, and also uh, database access object. There is a class called database access object and it has a counterintuitive APIs and I want to clean that up as well. Uh, how it's going to look like, I'm not sure yet, but that's also um, on our radar. Um, to recap, uh, if you've seen stuff like this, just don't use them. Uh, use the newer things. Uh, yeah, like any load balancer, it, you don't, for most cases, like, Job runner and some very niche parts of MediaWiki still need to uh, talk to load balancer, but you don't need to know what load balancer is. Um, anything related to get connection, build like or like build list, whatever, anything like that. Uh, the constants are also being deprecated. You just need to kind of split those instead and call a method for primary and call a method for replica, which you can then put, re put a return type hint for a readable database, and then you can have a, like a narrow interface and better coupling. Um, any uh, function call that does database query directly is also deprecated. Insert, select, update, uh, upsert, uh, delete, all of them are deprecated. WFGetDB, please don't use that. Uh, and that's, yeah. Uh,
please also don't write the scale, uh, raw scale and pass it around. The, um, yeah, that would be, I think, everything. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Hi, so thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering why does the MediaWiki Foundation build their own um, database abstraction layer instead of using something more conventional such as Doctrine? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, one of the one biggest reason for this, at least, uh, first is that, um, as I said, RD, it's not RDBMS library, it's just not DBAL, it has like so many things that it does, like transaction management and so on. So it doesn't, and they are all coupled to each other. So if I want to just remove the DBAL and replace it with Doctrine, it's not really possible. Right. Uh, the other part is like we use Doctrine for ab uh, abstract schema. I don't know if you know about abstract schema. So a schema of MediaWiki is actually is a JSON file now, uh, instead of uh, like raw SQL being written. And Doctrine DBAL actually produces uh, for like postures and SQLite and so on. It, you have one source of truth now and then all of them being produced by Doctrine and DBAL. Um, the other part of this is that the most important part of the, those libraries is the design of their APIs, which we reused uh, anyway. So the code to do that is not that different. So it's not that much work and it's not that much code anyway. Um, so it's simpler to just reuse the API, reuse their designs, but not reuse the code. Okay, thank you. No other questions. There may come a moment that I'm going to, oh, that I'm going to assign the volunteers. But. Uh, which versions of MediaWiki is this uh, available? Um, also a very good question. Uh, it basically, the answer is it depends. So some of these features are uh, like the select query builder is I think the oldest one, which is available from 2020. So we call five version ago maybe. Uh, but most of this stuff are 140, 141 and 142. For example, virtual domain is 141, uh, but uh, expression builders are 142. Uh, so it depends on how we were producing this. But not uh, 39, right? I don't think 39. I, I think Select Query Builder is just the only thing for 39. Yeah, I, I know that. And maybe I can actually provide. I'm not sure about that, but uh, double. You have to double check. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay. Do we have online questions? No, I don't think so. We're still discussing. I think <laughs> things uh, C Scott mentioned. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Amir, for thank you. giving us a peek into the into where it actually all happens. <laughs>